Hi, I'm Jason Mears, and this is Google Cloud VMware Engine 110, vSAN for GCP Admins Part 1. So you may have seen in my previous videos, I mentioned that I'd had quite a few comments about people saying that not everybody that's watching my videos is a VMware or a vSphere administrator, and actually some of the people watching it come from a cloud or a Google Cloud background, hence uh, people asking if I would do some more videos about the VMware side of VMware uh, Google Cloud VMware Engine. So this is another one of those videos which is an introduction really to some of the technologies from the VMware side in Google Cloud VMware Engine and this one is specifically going to focus on vSAN or Virtual SAN. So at the end of the last video I described things like vCenter server, data centers and clusters and in one of the examples I had a cluster with four vSphere hosts. So I'm going to talk about how we would run vSAN on those four vSAN, uh, vSphere hosts in cluster number one. So I'm going to start with the first node. So this is the same node we showed in the previous videos. But what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to put in a cache disk which I'm going to show in red and then some capacity disks which I'm going to show in blue. So this is just a representation, I'm not saying that the Google Cloud VMware Engine host servers have exactly this shape and size of disks or these numbers of disks, it's just a conceptual thing at this point. So for each of those servers in the vSAN cluster, I'm going to create something called a disk group. And a disk group takes the capacity from the cache disk and the capacity disks and turns it into a, a, a single thing or a single entity. So a disk group um, is a collection of disks, at least one cache disk, and then at least one capacity disk, and that now becomes a thing in its own right. So we've got a disk group um, in, in that first server. I'm gonna add the other four servers along and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with those two. So now we've got four servers with four disk groups, and each disk group is made up of at least one cache disk cache disk and at least one capacity disk and what vSAN does is it aggregates those and consolidates those and it turns it into what we call a vSAN data store so this is shared storage to, used by all of those four servers to run VMs and provide disks for operating systems and applications and data so that's an example of a vSAN data store which is a shared or network data store or or a uh, it looks a little, a little bit like a, a SAN that you would have seen in the past, but actually it's using capacity from inside the servers themselves. So that's the first part of vSAN. That's just a conceptual overview of how it works. In the actual Google Cloud VMware Engine, uh, what I do know is that, that each host in the Google Cloud VMware Engine has a total of two disk groups per server. So it's the same concept, it's just that there's two disk groups in each server. So if I had four servers in a cluster, uh, and two disk groups in each, I'd have eight disk groups in total, and what would happen is each of those disk groups would contribute to an overall vSAN data store, so that's uh, a data store with capacity and cache from all of the servers that's available to each of the servers in that cluster as shared storage. Now on release the details given for each server were that each server or each host was going to have 3.2 terabytes of cache uh, and it was going to have 19.2 terabytes of capacity. So in that example here, the whole server there has got three terabytes of cache divided between those two cache disks. It's actually two disks in the server, but the total is divided between them, and it's got a total of 19 terabytes between the two. So roughly one and a half terabytes of cache and 10 terabytes of capacity per disk group, and each server has got its own. So what would happen is, all of that capacity and all that cache is added up and becomes one big shared data store for use by all of the vSphere servers in the cluster. So I'll move that on a little bit now. And what I've still got exactly the same here. I've just made a little bit more room on screen because one of the things I can do is I could add another host with another set of disk groups. So that would um, add a host to the cluster, it would become a member of the cluster, it would not only be able to consume the stuff in that vSAN data store, but it would also add its own capacity to that vSAN data store. So I could add another server, I could add some more, so just by increasing the number of servers in that cluster, I add to the capacity of that data store. There's another couple of things that we can do as well. So 
This is possible if you're a traditional vSphere customer, but likely isn't possible for Google Cloud VMware Engine because I believe there's a limit on the number of disks in each server. But some enterprise customers would go and add extra disk groups to the server, but it is dependent having enough slots or spaces in the server to add new disks. But technically, um, if you're a vSAN customer and the server allows, which is a big caveat for the Google Cloud VMware Engine, you could technically add more and more disk groups um, and by that way, you could increase the size and the performance and the availability of the data store. So I think currently at release, the only thing you can do on Google Cloud VMware Engine is add more servers with two disk groups per server. But um, most vSAN customers, as long as they've got a server with enough slots or enough holes in the front of the server, they could technically keep adding disk groups. But at, at release, it's two disk groups per server with the capacities I mentioned before. So just a summary, the uh, the 30 second takeaway or the elevator moment is uh, the disks inside each server are then turned into disk groups and they comprise of at least one cache disk and at least one capacity disk. And then all those disk groups across all the servers in the vSAN cluster then contribute to the total storage of the vSAN data store, which looks like a, a SAN or a virtual SAN available to all the hosts in the same cluster as the vSAN data store. In future videos, we might talk about the ability to access this data from other clusters, but just for this one, for the simple one, we'll just assume that all the servers in the cluster consume, uh, contribute to the data store and can consume space on the data store. So that was, um, that was the um, vSAN for GCP administrators part one. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you found that useful.